Often when we're building software, we want users to be able to create items inside of other items. In other words, things in things. In formats like documents, this is really easily done. You can just think about a bulleted list under a header or sections and subsections or toggles. In software, this happens in lots of different ways, like putting songs into a playlist or putting projects into a folder. And in Glide, we can make this by setting up relations and then building our UI around that. Let's start with an abstract example so we can understand this from first principles. In the data editor, we've got two tables here, groups and things. These are very simple with just a few columns of dummy data in each one. For this example, we can think of the groups as the parent set of data and the things as children. Importantly, we need to add a column in our things table for the group name. This will allow us to categorize our things into groups later with the relation. In the layout editor, we have a collection and we've set the source table to be the groups table. Now, adding on this collection is already enabled. So every time a user fills out this form, they're gonna be creating another group or another row in the groups table. We could customize, of course, what information users add to this table, but for now, let's keep it really simple. Next, let's create a way for people to add things. Now, we could create a new screen here with a new collection connected to the things table, but what we actually want in terms of the UI is for our users to go inside of a group and then add a thing from within that group. So inside of the detail screens on one of our groups, we'll add a collection and we'll connect it to the things table. Now users can add things inside of things, but there are two problems. One, the collection inside of each category shows all the things regardless of their category. And two, when a user adds new things, it doesn't automatically populate our data with the group that it was added in. Now, the easiest way to solve the first one of these is to create a relation and to create a parent-child relationship between the groups and their things. In our groups table, we'll create a new relation column called things. This will be a multiple relation and will match the group name column from our groups table to the group column from our things table. Now we can instantly see the things that fit into each group. We've matched the children with their parents. In the layout editor, in the collection data source dropdown, we can see a new data source, which is the relation that we created for these rows. If we change to this source, each group will now show only its children. However, we haven't fixed point number two. When users add new things, it doesn't automatically populate which group it is in. So let's fix that now. When a user is on a screen, Glide knows which screen they're on, and you as the app builder can use that information. When we open this form screen and open the components menu, we can see many different types of components useful for populating new rows with data. But there is also a really useful section here called values from screen. Here we get to pass through with our form the values from the screen that the form is within. Just to illustrate this, let's open up the data tab on the current screen and we can see the data behind it. This is the clouds category, so we can pass through that value by adding the name column. Now we just need to say which column we want to pass this value to in the things table, which for us is the group column. Now when we add a new item, we'll see that it's added in the category because this new row has been auto-populated with the group category. Okay, so that's a look at a very abstract example. Let's move to data that's more practical now, like projects and tasks. Imagine you're creating a project management app. Instead of groups, you'd have projects, and instead of things, you'd have tasks. So tasks are the children of projects. To do this, we need to structure our data exactly the same as we did in our example before. We'll have a table for projects and a table for tasks, and we can set up a relation between these two tables to categorize our tasks in the projects they belong to. Now, one thing you have to be really careful of when you're working with real data is that because relations work by matching values, you have to be sure that your group names, in other words, your matching values are unique. If we let users create their own project names or indeed let them update their own project names, this means that this could break at any time because they could make duplicate names or they could change names that already existed, which would break the relation. This is where we can use row IDs to make sure that there's a way to differentiate between the different groups. In our projects table, we'll add a row ID column. This will automatically generate a unique string of values for every row in our table. In this way, we can be sure to differentiate between different projects, even if they have the same name. 
But now we need these project IDs in the tasks table so that we can update our relation. So we'll fast forward a bit of manual work here where we're just adding these project IDs in place of the actual project names. You can see here why setting up a relation with row IDs first is a good idea. Now each task has a project ID, we can change our relation. Instead of matching with the project's name, we can match with that unique row ID. But in our app, our users won't see these row IDs. They only exist in our data to create the relation. What we can do is actually modify our form so that it automatically collects the row ID of the project when the user submits a new task and then puts it in the project ID column in the tasks table. Now we can see our tasks finding their parents and we've successfully nested our things inside of other things. <laughs>